Hello everyone and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at optimization, uh, particularly for VR projects, but uh, this can be applied to any of your Unreal Engine projects if you want to boost your frame rate or, or get yourself a little extra, you know, little extra uh, wiggle room in your in your frame budget. So I'm just here in the in, in my usual um, tutorials project, uh, and I thought I'd just go through some of the different things that can improve performance in a few different different ways. The first thing that we'll do is uh, come up here to this left hand drop down menu and hit show FPS uh, to show us the current frame rate. If uh, you're seeing it sort of like I am here capped at 60, this is either because you've got vSync running or um, the engine is capping at 60 frames a second. But that's all right. With uh, the focus on the viewport window, if you bring down the console, that's with the tilde key, the one to the left of the one key just above the tab key, gets a console here that we can execute commands with. And the console we're looking for is t.maxfps and just unhook this, just set it to like 999. And in my case, we're not gonna see any change because I'm currently recording at 60 frames a second. So it can't, uh, yeah, so it's not going to come up up from there. But, um, you know, if you, if, you follow, if you follow along, um, you might've seen a change there in your frame rate. If not, that's okay. Let's head up here to edit and then project settings and we can change a bunch of different things. The first thing that we'll want to change, uh, if we head on down to rendering and we scroll for a bit, we hit, uh, we get to the forward renderer. So we see here there's an option for forward shading, um, which when we check it, we'll have to restart the engine and it will have to recompile all of the built-in engine shaders. But this will get you about a 30 to 40% um, performance boost across the board. Uh, the only thing is that uh, your game might look a little different and you won't have access to, well, in, a few things, but in particular, um, scene texture buffers. So you won't be able to do any um, like tricky custom depth or post-processing with forward shading on, but you do get a huge, huge performance boost. Uh, the next thing is, let's have a look at some other rendering settings. Here we go. So with our default settings here in the rendering tab, uh, we need to disable some of these heavier heavier effects. So off goes Bloom, off goes AO. We can leave on the static fraction. That's the AO for, for baked lighting. Auto exposure, we want to turn this off anyway. Um, motion blur off, uh, lens flares off, up sampling off. Uh, our anti-aliasing method, we want to we want to change to MSAA. Um, and that'll do here for the minute, I think. A um, few other options here here we go here's mr here's mom so we want mobile hdr uh, to be on um but we can yeah we can we can switch it off with some if we read the tooltip here yeah disable the setting for a performance boost and to enable stereoscopic rendering optimizations so we turn this off but we want to enable instanced stereo this is so that instead of just simply rendering three entire frames one for your pc and and one each for, for your eyes in vr it just does one frame and um your instances draw holes so that it's not as um, not as performance intensive. We want to turn that on. We also want to enable round robin occlusion queries. This is just a better way uh, that for the system to uh, detect occlusion from like occlusion when objects are occluding other objects uh, without having to sort of do it per camera, like per eye. It just sort of does it um, all around. The next thing we'll have a look at, and uh, well, personally, if anything like me. Uh, scrolling through these big long lists is fairly tedious. So we'll just start using the um, the search bar at the top. Um, actually, while I'm here though, so disable vertex fogging in mobile shaders. If you're not using, um, if you're not using fog, uh, just, just turn this off and you probably won't be using fog anyway. Uh, mobile MSA, we can leave at four times, but you can drop this down or even go no MSA A if you want um, a little bit more of a boost there. You just might get some sort of rough uh, outlines around objects. Let's see, a uh, number of CSM cascades. We want to set this to one. This, <clears throat> so this affects uh, shadow cascades, which is like from where from where you are outwards, uh, the closer the closer to you to to where your camera is, the higher detail you'll see in shadows. And as you go further away. Uh, there'll be a series of steps where the quality of shadows gets lower and lower. It's all just for um, optimization purposes. We want to just leave uh, one cascade because just rendering the one cascade is less than rendering all of them and then applying them to the scene. 
We would then want to have a look and make sure that default RHI is just set to the default, but we want it on uh, DirectX 12, D3D 12. Next thing, uh, let's look for custom depth. Custom depth stencil pass, we want to disable. This is just another rendering pass that we're not gonna need, especially if we're using forward rendering, we don't need um, another custom depth stencil pass on top. And we can turn off this custom depth with temporal AA jitter. I think uh, custom depth pass has AA jitter and disable can be useful when custom depth pass is up to Yeah, just, just disable it. We're not using temporal AA and we're not using custom depth. So it's just some overhead that we can just do without. Uh, let's see, the next thing we wanna do is uh, have a look at world settings. So if we, oh, hang on, one last thing. So all settings, and uh, let's just search for mobile, mobile HDR, do we turn this on? Okay, so we have mobile HDR here. Um, we can disable this for a uh, performance boost. Uh, wait, did I talk? Yeah, I've already mentioned mobile HDR. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so we can head back to our uh, editor window here, go over to world settings, and in the world settings, we want to search for what's called mono, VR mono culling distance. Uh, this actually, I believe this option has moved. Yeah, I think it used to be in project settings, but now it's just in world settings. So this is the mono culling distance. And this is a distance from you, from the player, beyond which uh, objects won't be rendered in stereo. They'll just be rendered in, in mono and then instanced across to both eyes in VR. Um, if anything, anything's pretty close, uh, this, this will look strange. <laughs> But uh, for distant objects, like distant skyscapes or uh, like a city or, or whatever kind of skyline, um, you don't, you know, you don't need to render it in stereo if it's that far away because you're not going to see it sort of in 3D almost. It'll, it'll just look like a background image. So if we set this to something like, uh, not, some, not something too crazy, just 2500 or something, then anything beyond that is going to be rendered in mono, which will help for, um, for optimization. Okay, uh, with that one done, let's just jump back into project settings again. We want to have a look at se separate, separate translucency. So uh, we disable this uh, because we're not going to be separating translucency uh, after depth of field. And really, if you're working in uh, VR, you shouldn't be using translucent materials anyway. Translucent materials are the most intensive kind of materials except for like decals and some post-processing. So yeah, we should be avoiding translucency uh, in a general way. And that brings me on to, uh, let's find, uh, just to, whatever, I folded a plane. So let's right click here, we'll create a new material. Doesn't matter what the name is, and we'll open it up. So when you're working in VR, there are many different sort of uh, material optimizations that we can do, for example, not having them two-sided or, um, not casting ray tray shadows, like that kind of thing. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to look at only one uh, option in here, and that's this option here for fully rough. <coughs> what this effectively does, uh, that doesn't literally do this, but it effectively does this, is it's just going to disable uh, any reflectivity, uh, mostly the roughness channel. If we hit fully rough, then um, yeah, it, it sort of uses a very cut down version of the material which is going to be much more higher performing. You just won't quite have that same kind of uh, freedom or, or flexibility as you would with a, a regular a regular material. So this is just one of those things to keep in mind. Um, just, just when you're working in VR, just set every material to fully rough and see how it looks. And uh, if you do have to you know, use roughness for something like for, for metallics or mirrors, uh, glass maybe, if you, if you really wanted to have a good looking glass, then yeah, you could talk about it with uh, with a tech director or something like that. Well, okay. Uh, the last thing to do after this is just um, restart the editor to see the changes, which I won't do in this video because it will take ages. Um, although before we go, something else that we can look at. Uh, two console commands that we can use for VR performance. Uh, both of these commands will affect visual fidelity in a major way, but will improve uh, Im improve performance more than anything else that I talked about here. Uh, these consoles are, uh, console commands are, the first one is vr.pixel density, and this will dictate precisely how many pixels uh, are going to be piped to your headset. 
so the higher this value, well, at, at 1.0, that's the resolution of your headset. Anything above one, you get into these super resolution um, territory. And anything below one is going to appear very pixelated and choppy. But say if you say like I use a, an HP Reverb G2, uh, which has huge, huge resolution. So you can get away with 0.7 or, or even 0.5 and still maintain the same kind of visual fidelity as an Oculus Rift S. So uh, it's a bit of a balancing act. These are the kinds of commands that you might like to include in your options menu. And the other command that we'll look at is r.screen percentage. And this will be a, a percentage. So at 100%, you're looking at 100% of the pixels that are rendered. Anything below that, and it's going to be rendering fewer pixels and just spreading them out over the screen. So it'll look similar to pixel density, but um, It'll look similar, yeah, and it'll perform way better if you go lower than 100. But in my experience, I found that the screen percentage value tends to look worse at lower values than pixel density does. It's all a matter of, um, it's all a balancing act. And you could even uh, like create some code for your app, which, which would say, say where your frame rate dropped below like 90 or 80. Uh, then it will bring down the screen percentage by 5 or 10% or, or bring down the pixel density by 0.1 or 0.2. And that will uh, that will certainly help you out. So give them a shot um, just to see how they look and, and try any of these things in your projects. And uh, yeah, let me know how it goes. Let me know if um, if they made a difference. I've noticed that in this, in, in just the, the default project here, I went from the, the cap 60 FPS up to over 400 uh, FPS by implementing these changes. So there's certainly plenty uh, plenty to gain in, uh, in this kind of thing. And um, yeah, I mean, I suppose a bit, a bit sorry for a kind of a dry and sort of slightly more technical video, but this is the kind of thing that people want to know. So I hope you guys got something out of it. And uh, as usual, the easiest way to get a hold of me directly is via Discord. I'll leave a link to the server in the description of this video. And if you'd like to support the channel, support my work, uh, there'll also be a Gumroad link and a PayPal link as well. So you can do that if you so choose. It's not compulsory. Anyway, thank you guys. I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.